Right, Jeff, perhaps we should move on to another, to another topic. Yeah. Um, w at the Reason Rally, uh, I um, said something which came in for a certain amount of criticism, and I, I'm trying to decide whether I ought to apologize or not. Um, I said something like um, that when you meet somebody like a Roman Catholic who holds ridiculous beliefs, for example, about the transubstantiation, um, that you should withhold respect from that belief, and I think it came across as withholding respect from the individual, individual Catholic, which I must say is very tempting. Um, <laughs> but I, I, what I was trying to say was that, w that you should challenge the Catholic or whoever it is holds the absurd belief, in this case that a wafer, when blessed by a priest, uh, literally, literally turns into a first century Jew. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't quite hear that. Don't or do? Don't. No, okay. Um, anyway, um, it came across as, as um, being something that um, I, I should apologize for because it suggested disrespect for the individual. Um, I actually quoted Johan Hari, the British journalist, who says, I respect you too much to respect your ridiculous beliefs. And that's not a bad way of putting that's it. Yeah. Um, but I actually, I actually thought of modifying that to, I respect you too much to believe that you could possibly hold such ridiculous beliefs. Yes. Um, and if you, if you seriously call yourself a Roman Catholic, will you please either defend that belief in transubstantiation and explain why it's not ridiculous, or else admit that you're not really a Roman Catholic at all. Yes. You can't have it both ways. And that, that's, I think, what I, sh what I should have said. Yeah. Yeah. There's, uh, there's just no way that you can politely suggest to somebody that they have devoted their life to a folly. <laughs> but sometimes you have to say that. Yeah. And you can say, pardon me, sir or madam, not meaning any disrespect, but has it occurred to you that you're... You've wasted your life. That you've wasted your life. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, that, that is, Dan, that is actually, in my experience, the, mm -hmm. the, the highest hurdle for people to clear. I, I, I once yeah. had the benefit of, of just by accident winding up at a dinner table with someone who had been a lifelong super devout Catholic and had lost her faith like that morning. <laughs> and so she was just, you know, uh, you know, eyes ado with, with the kind of the new moment in her life. And, and the thing she couldn't get over was how much time she had wasted. Yeah. I mean, all of the, just the invest, the sunk cost of emotional yeah. attention and, I mean, all of the, the rituals and all of the things she didn't study when she was busy trying yeah. to be the most informed Catholic in human history. Uh, it just was, I mean, that was so agonizing and that was, it takes, it, it takes people so long to just blast through that and, yeah. and start yeah. a new moment in life. It's a, it's a bit ironic to realize that church leaders understand this too. One of the more interesting themes in the discussion of the uh, Dennett Lascola first study from some of the religious leaders was they were giving advice to, to preachers how to deal with, with uh, candor with your congregation. Mm. And basically one of them said, I can't remember which, just as well that I can't, said, if you have an old congregation, <laughs> um, don't try to at this point, don't try to change their minds. Just mouth the familiar words and let them go to their graves, basically, without anybody challenging their faith. However, if you have a mixed age congregation, then you've got your job cut out for you because then, of course, what you have to do is speak with tongues, in <laughs> tongues, rather. You have to, uh, with a forked tongue, rather. What you have to do is <laughs> say nothing that will offend or shake the faith of the old folks while somehow letting on to the youngsters that you don't really mean it. <laughs> Hard I, job. I had an Australian friend 
who, when asked why it was that there are so many old people in church, he said, and you'll have to pardon my attempt at an Australian accent, cramming for the final? <laughs> <laughs> Uh-huh. <laughs>